got another video on the aromatic chemistry topic. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so the first part of A, so we've got the Kekulase structure on the left, we've got the delocalized structure on the right. So basically what they're looking for is in the Kekulase structure that you overlap sort of three alternating pairs of P orbitals to create the pi bonds. Whereas in the delocalized model, all six of the P orbitals will overlap and that'll create the delocalized ring of pi electrons above and below the ring. Moving on to the next part, so these two extra pieces of experimental evidence. Well, the first one I've gone for is the CC bond lengths being equal and would need to say that they are intermediate between carbon-carbon single and carbon-carbon double bond lengths. The other one is the enthalpy change of hydrogenation. Just be careful that you say that and not hydration, which is a common mistake. So the enthalpy change of hydrogenation was found to be less exothermic than expected. Part B now, so the number of peaks in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum of compound A is 6. I'll just quickly explain. So that's unique, that's unique, that's unique. So we've got 3 so far. Equivalent, so that's 4. Equivalent, that's 5. Unique, so that's 6. Moving on to the mechanism now, so we're going to take the aluminium chloride catalyst and react it with chlorine. That's going to generate the electrophile and it's going to generate this AlCl4 minus ion. Next part of the mechanism, so the electrophile accepts a pair of electrons from the delocalized ring of pi electrons. So we have a curly arrow from the circle in the benzene ring to the Cl+. That's going to generate this unstable intermediate. And we take a curly arrow from the CH bond back in to reform the delocalized ring of pi electrons. That's going to give you your product and an H plus ion. And all we need to do to show that the AlCl3 behaves as a catalyst is react that with that, make the AlCl3 back, and we get an HCl molecule as well. And the next part, the reagents and conditions are nitric acid is your reagent, and sulfuric acid is your condition. That's obviously acting as a catalyst in that reaction. Finally, the percentage yield calculation. So the first thing I'm doing is working out the moles of ethyl benzene that we've got. So that's mass over MR, 0.025. And if you look at the flow chart, we should theoretically make the same number of moles of compound B. So the next thing we do is work out the actual moles of B that have formed, so mass over the MR of compound B. So we get that many moles. And then I always do my percentage yield calculations from the moles rather than the masses. So the percentage yield is the actual moles divided by the theoretical moles times 100, and the three significant figures, 61.2%.